Marine systems integration is complicated, expensive, and messy, and it shouldn't be. This cost makes it difficult to build new marine applications, especially if we want to build them at scale and in a cost-effective way. One of these barriers is the lack of an adopted standardization and hardware interfaces in marine systems. Today, we use a wide range of connectors, protocols, and even simple integration tasks turn into unnecessarily complicated and risky hardware engineering projects. We introduced Bristlemouth, a new full stack marine connectivity standard that's conceptually analogous to USB for desktops, desktop systems or CAN bus for automotive and industrial. The idea is we wanna make it so that you can buy something off the shelf, you plug it into a marine system or platform, and it just works anywhere in the ocean. We build the technology with a new connector standard that is robust, durable, works at full ocean depth, and is extraordinarily cheap. It's capable of delivering power and data on a single bus. It's suitable for microwatt sensing applications or large kilowatt ROV applications. We can transmit low bitrate data efficiently, send critical commands with low latencies, and also stream video at up to hundreds of megabits per second between systems in an application. Finally, each node in this application is treated as a peer-to-peer -peer messaging node. We form a true network where we can have modules sending data freely, building complex applications simply, and not having bottlenecks of processing and constraints and capabilities. Rather than dive into the technical details that underlie the Bristlemouth standard, we decided it would be better to show you a demonstration of the types of applications you can build, how quickly they can be assembled, and how safely they can be scaled in real-time marine sensing networks. So let's imagine that we wanted to detect marine mammals, say dolphin calls. The first thing that we would do is select a sensor to do the job. In this case, it would probably be a hydrophone. For the demonstration, we're using an off-the-shelf audio microphone. Next, we need to figure out how we're gonna turn the raw sensor data into the presence of a dolphin's call. And to do that, we need processing. In a typical marine system, we might store all the raw data and then post-process later, but that's not good for real-time applications. Maybe we'd select a sensing platform that has processing capabilities and we integrate our sensors into the platform and then use the onboard processing uh, to do filtering and maybe even machine learning detection. In a bristlemouth application, we actually bring the processing to the sensor in the same module in an edge computing fashion. And so I can connect my, my sensor to this module, which in a Bristlemouth ecosystem is called a moat. The moat does two things. One, it provides this local processing to be able to do uh, any kind of intelligence or processing that's needed. And it also provides the network interface to be able to connect this sensor to other parts of the system. This mode is a prototype. It's a, a powerful processor and in application, it actually gets a lot smaller than this. And we can also implement moats in, in different capabilities per the application need. Uh, so for this one, I can plug it into my computer using a USB cable. Open a Python interpreter and immediately start writing code that gets loaded onto the moat. Running Python on our moat processor, we can develop applications extremely quickly. So I'm using an open source audio library. I'm gonna create a microphone object Uh, designating the board input that the microphone is attached to. I can read the envelope DB SPL from the library, which does all of the signal processing necessary to pull the data. Uh, and then we can print that to the terminal, save the code, and it automatically loads on the processor and runs. And we can see the DB SPL printing out here, responding to the volume of my voice. We could then add a simple threshold detection. Save the code. And now we have our dolphin detector. 
Uh, finally, I'm going to use the onboard LED to provide a visual indication of when our dolphin squeak is detected. When I save the Python file, the code is automatically loaded onto the processing module and run. And so with just a few minutes of work, we have our dolphin call detector. The next thing we need for our application is a way to provide power to our sensor. And I'm not gonna bring my laptop with the USB cable uh, to the ocean. But what we do have is the first commercially available bristle mount device, the SOFAR spotter, which is a solar powered instrument buoy with real time connectivity. Now, like my desktop USB connection, Bristlemouth provides a common connector interface that transports both power and data. We can transport power over hundreds of meters of tether as well as data at bit rates in very power constrained applications at megabits uh, or up to streaming video at hundreds of megabits per second, all on a single uh, conductor bundle that only uses two conductors to maximize robustness and simplicity in tough marine applications. So I'm gonna plug in my dolphin detecting hydrophone to the smart mooring cable. Install it in my waterproof housing. Connect our bristlemouth bulkhead connector with jumpers, which are extremely cheap, simple, rated to full ocean depth, transmit thousands of watts to a single node. Turn on my spotter. And now we have a powered application that is running a dolphin detector 20, 100 meters, wherever we want it in the water column. We have our sensing and our processing, we have our power. The next thing we need is a place to put the data. Now, in a typical platform, you might have onboard uh, storage or telemetry resources that you can interact with. With this modular approach, we now look at Spotter as having an API that we can use to store and send data. And so with a few lines of code again, plugging back into uh, our laptop with the USB cable, Now we can import a Python library that will give us access to the Spotter API. And we can use that to, instead of printing to the local uh, USB console from the moat, we can log data to the SD card. And we'll do uh, a little string formatting for verbosity. Uh, similarly, we can now use the Spotter API when we get the threshold detection to use the Spotter satellite module to send uh, data to the remote backend system. The Spotter will uh, tag that data with a timestamp and geolocations, and it'll be accessible via the SOFAR API. So now, coming back to our detector, I can unplug the USB cable. Plug it into Spotter. And now we see we have the streaming audio data. And when we detect a dolphin, the satellite message alert is triggered. Now, Bristlemouth isn't just a simple way of connecting a single sensor to a platform. It's a true networking technology. Under the hood, when we plug this module into the smart mooring that connects to the spotter, there's an automated discovery process that happens. There's an automated routing that happens to transmit data. And there's automated capabilities broadcasting so that from any node in this system, 
we can discover the APIs, capabilities, settings, and configurations of the other elements that are connected. To illustrate this, we can show that we can simply connect another module anywhere in this network, and everything still just works. Here's another module in a waterproof housing uh, that is simply just a light. And this is, you know, for a stand-in for some kind of actuator, other alerting system. Uh, maybe we're connecting to a real-time RF network that this water doesn't have the capability natively to support. All we have to do is plug this in to our smart mooring system. Now with this setup, we have our spotter providing power and uh, interface for SD card and telemetry through this section of smart mooring cable to our light module. And then power is distributed through this module and there's a data can be routed through this module to our dolphin detector. So now we've programmed the spotter so that when it receives a hydrophone dolphin call alert, it will send data to this module, which is demonstrated by the light. Now, one of the compelling things about Bristlemouth is that we don't actually need to put that piece of processing business logic on the spotter. We can go a layer deeper, and instead of using the spotter API, we can use the core Bristlemouth API, which exposes traditional publish, subscribe patterns, request response, and a remote protocol processing interface and distributed storage for building modern distributed sensing and robotics applications very simply and stably. Now we're going to import a library that will let us use the Bristlemouth API, much like we did with Spotter. And for our dolphin detection alert, instead of sending uh, satellite data through Spotter, we're going to use the Bristlemouth publish subscribe mechanism. And what this does is we can select a topic that we want this message to be published on. And so we have a predefined set of alerts that we can use as a topic uh, that we can define custom for the application. Uh, and then we also say what data we want to publish to this topic. And in this case, we'll just publish the DBSPL. Now, any other nodes in the system can subscribe to this topic. And when something is published to this topic, they'll receive that data. So on the right here, we have the code that runs on the other module in our demonstration. And let's make that do something in response to a message on this topic. So we'll import the Bristlemouth library. Uh, we'll define a handler that we want to be called when we receive data on this topic. And we'll just make that uh, turn the LED red. Wait a little bit. And then turn the LED green. Uh, then we need to tell the Bristlemouth library that we want to subscribe to our alert topic. And when that happens, we want it to pass the message to this handler that we've described. And when we run this code, these two systems will be able to communicate using the simple publish subscribe mechanism. Now, there's a lot more capability and complexity in the interface and the types of applications and features you can build with it. Uh, but this shows very simple core features of the publish subscribe system in Bristlemouth. Now that we're using the Bristlemouth publish subscribe interface instead of the spotter API, we don't really need the spotter in the system. We can replace it with a simple power source that provides power over the Bristlemouth interface. And the modules are still able to network together, route messages, and interact to build an application.